I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Be water, my friend. Hello, dear biohackers and productivity nerds, and welcome to part two of my interview with the fascinating UJ Ramdas, creator and inventor of the popular five-minute journal and the productivity planner. UJ is an expert in behavioral psychology, a former hypnotist and speaker at biohacking conferences, among others, the biohacking conference 2014, where we met, and he's just a fascinating cerebral person that I love to talk to. If you missed part one, where we talk about gratitude, I urge you to listen to that because it really teaches you how you can use the art of feeling thankful for something to improve the quality of your life and be happier. In this episode, we focus on productivity, also something that we as humans seem to struggle with on a pretty much everyday basis. Now, Yuja and I will talk about why it is that we feel unproductive and how we can change that. So you will learn methods that you can implement right now in your life to feel more productive and be more productive even by tomorrow. So enjoy this episode, another wonderful one with UJ. Bye. It's your second product as well, the Productivity Planner. Correct. Is there a reason why productivity comes second? Is it gratitude first, productivity second? Um, well, we, for us, we create things that we want to see in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. The founder journal happened because we wanted to see, we wanted to have it. We wanted to do it. Proxy planner happened because this was the need in our lives, right? We were not as productive as we wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, what's going on? <laughs> We're trying everything. I can so relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Right? It's, it's, it's frustrating. And we've all had, had those nights where, let's say you're lying in bed at night and you're exhausted. You're exhausted because you were working all day. And you're just like, what really did I do today? Like, what meaningful work did I accomplish today? What did I actually do? And you can't, you can't come up with one thing. That's a very shitty feeling. <laughs> yeah. It's a very shitty feeling. And I honestly hope, like, you know, I really wish we could eradicate that feeling from you. It's a really horrible feeling because it's not like you were slacking. It's not like you were um, not engaged. It's not like you're not doing, you know, work that inspires you. But at the end of the day, you look back and you said, I didn't really accomplish too much that I'm proud of. And we wanted to tackle that problem. We wanted to be like, okay, let's fix this issue. Because we definitely have it and we have it. Other people have it too. Other people have it too. Let's fix it for ourselves. And if it works, let's just share it with everybody else. And so that's what we did. Um, because I feel like we are never fucking taught in school how to do this. How to manage our time, how to, how to move from the most important thing, which is the first thing in the morning, to the task of less importance. We're never taught this. Like, I honestly feel like if we had a killer education system mm -hmm. that taught us this, and like, you could even teach everything that we really need to know in life between, let's say, 5 and 12. That's it. You're done. Go do your thing now. Right. We could do that. Um, but now where we end up being, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, like having to learn all the fundamental things in life again, right? right. How to start the day. What's the first thing to do? How to organize <laughs> task lists. Like, right? What to eat. It sounds yeah. simple. Yeah. It's a bit what to eat. Exactly. Right? How to move your body, which is, I think, the most fundamental fucking thing that we should learn. How to move your body. How to, how to lift properly, in my opinion, that should be taught too. Yeah, we right? had Kelly Starrett uh, actually on, on this podcast too for a short episode of the conference. Yeah, Kelly's great. Yeah, he's um, showed us a couple of tricks how to stand correctly, which seems yeah. also so simple, but so many people do exactly. it wrong. Exactly. So 
those are the kind of things, in my opinion, that need to be taught. And for the first thing we got to do to realize that is we don't know how to do this. We don't know how to do this. It's okay. It's okay. Let's, let's learn. At least after several years of being alive on the planet, let's learn how to do the fundamental things that allow us to be effective. So that was the basis of, of the creation of the Productivity Planner in a certain sense. The, the one question I have with productivity, because uh, I've went to a workshop before and that, that was a huge discussion going on. What actually does it mean to be productive? And this, the one side said, it's a basic equation, you know, it's the input and output. And uh, the other person or the other people said, it's more about the feeling of feeling productive. And there's a difference. You could do maybe the same things throughout the whole course of, of, of a day. And the one person feels productive and the other doesn't. So what does it mean for you to be productive? So, you know, you take both camps and, you know, one, one camp is more left-brained and the other camp is more right-brained. And the thing is, human beings are, have both sides. And I feel like it's, 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 it's not A or B, it's A and B. Okay. Right? Um, it makes sense. We have both sides of the brain. Um, and so there is a logical side, there is an emotional side. You know, you could, you could think you're really productive, but if you don't feel it, it doesn't register. It doesn't mm -hmm. register and like, it doesn't actually matter. Guess what? The feeling is actually what runs the show. Right? The feeling is the beliefs, the, the identity, the, the core stuff. So, but you could also feel productive and know that you were not, you, you, you missed on a bunch of stuff. You didn't actually do what was the most important thing. Mm. Right? That's pretty important too. It needs to, it needs to align. And, and the important thing is to figure it out the night before. Figure that out. What do you need for the next day to be productive? If you figure that out the previous day, you're good to go. Yeah, I actually, I really, I followed that because you described that in the, in the planner yeah. and uh, it really makes a big difference. It's almost yeah. like you free yourself up of a lot of baggage yeah. because you know what you're gonna do. Exactly, it's huge. It makes a lot of difference. So what, what I typically say is, is make it difficult for you not to do the habit. You know, if you say, you know, if you have a girlfriend or a spouse, um, you know, say, no, I owe you $5, right? Yeah. If I don't do the three, I, I don't, I don't say the three things that I definitely want to do tomorrow. Um, if I don't kind of plan it out in my product for the planner, I owe you money, stuff like that. Yeah, no, I, re I really like that one, one page where you describe, uh, Where you, where you have to write down as the user, I am, my name is Maximilian, and I'm prom yeah. I promise to use it for five days. And you know what? Yes. That actually made me do it the five days in a row because uh, otherwise, uh, one night I was like, ah, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to do it now. And then I thought, oh, I no, I otherwise I, would, I, 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 would, I don't know, 100 bucks to my friend. No, I, I don't want to do that's it. That's great. See? <laughs> that's fantastic. All right. So we learned that uh, to be more productive, You need to have this one thing that you really want to get done. How long can that thing be, in, in your opinion? What is, how big should that task be? Not too small, so, I guess, not too big. Yeah, anywhere between two and a half and three hours is good. Any more than three hours, and that task requires more time, and you need to chunk it down to a smaller part. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, You know, do taxes is not a task. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's not a task. Um, Eating, a I guess, of, also not a task. <laughs> yeah. There's so many small, smaller chunks, and that's actually what, what stops human beings from actually taking action. Now, being specific about the outcome, being specific about what you need to do. Hiring is not a task, right? Going through job applications is a task. Do you think that today it is harder to be productive? I mean, I think I notice all around me, pretty much everyone I know is feeling unproductive at least several days a week. And it's, it's a huge problem. I agree. Why do people feel so unproductive now? 
Because we don't have the mental resources to deal with the influx of technology. Um, you know, so Facebook, Instagram, etc. They're not designed to make you happy. If anything, they're designed to make you really unhappy. Um, because a human being, or the way our minds work, we, we compare. We cannot not compare, right? So let's say um, a very simple experience. You know, you live in, in Germany right now, mm -hmm. right? You come to Canada and you'll say, oh my God, it's cold, right? Because you'll notice the difference in temperature. You can't help but do that. That's what we all do. With um, Facebook and Instagram, what happens is you, most people post the best version of their lives, you know, on, on average and exaggerated version of their lives, right? Pretty, pretty consistently. Guilty as and, charged. I, I right? do it every day. Right. And, yeah. and most people perceive other people's realities, right? As those inflated, exaggerated ex ex experiences. Subconsciously, even if they know they're consciously or not, they're comparing. Mm. There's, there's a comparison. And, and that inflation of expectation costs happiness because happiness equals expect, expectations minus reality. Yeah, makes right? so much sense. So the more people engage in that, the more unhappy they'll become. That's, that's the first point. Second point, they're also most apps, most technologies designed for you to be addicted to them, right? Like we mentioned earlier, easiest way to be unhappy, get an addiction. So because a lot of them are designed by great UI, UX people, psychologists, etc., to prey on our minds for our attention, for our engagement, etc., the engagement of our, the thing that we need so much to do in life does not happen. It's a great tragedy. It's like the greatest tragedy of our time mm. uh, is that the human being isn't able to devote time to the things they really care about because their attention gets dispersed by all of this other stuff that does not matter. Um, so that's why I think most people are not feeling productive. They're not actually going to be able to follow through on stuff. Um, it's a problem. Do you actually use social media then, or did you already get off everything? No, so I used it intelligently, right? So I, I, um, I curate the things I'm able to see um, to, to reflect what I want, want to see it, right? So if there is inflation, um, I'm, I'm aware of it. And uh, you can also get things and, 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 and plugins to block your newsfeed completely mm. uh, as well. And there's, there's tons of ways to hack around it if you know the general concept. Yeah, no, right. the problem is really omnipresent here. Uh, and uh, I think it, that there will be a need for, ser for more and more services like what you just said to actually yeah. help people get off these addictions. So. They are addicted. Like, and the, the, the best way to start is to just acknowledge that we all have an addiction. Right? Just, just, to, just to even say um, and, and, and shed light on that is, is, is enough. It's actually a really wonderful thing. Speaking of addiction, actually, because, it, uh, you know, we are called the Flow Great Show. And what, what we are all about is pretty much to help people get more flow time, time in Sweet. the flow state. So uh, there's also people that can get addicted to that extreme yeah. athletes that you know are just addicted to that feeling of this uh, biochemical cocktail in their brains yeah and uh, however productivity and flow seem to be highly connected and i i notice you know when i really uh cut out uh sources of distractions and focus on this one thing that now i ride my planner yeah and uh I work on it for a while, then after some time, I tend to get into that flow state. Mm -hmm. So, and also you mentioned that actually in the book that uh, yeah. it helps you get into flow. Yeah. And I wanted to know from you, uh, other than let's say focusing, what are your flow triggers personally? How oh my do you, God. 
Amazing. Getting, Great question. Well, I, I'm feeling the flow right now, to be honest. <laughs> um, I have so many triggers. Uh, sauna is huge. Ah, okay. So, so uh, dry sauna, steam room, and in, in, inter, interspersed with cold showers, right? Um, anywhere between, let's say, three and five sessions, and I am ecstatic. That cocktail is doing amazing things for me. Right, so so dry sauna until you can't take it anymore. Cold shower, wet sauna. Sorry, um, steam room until you can't take it anymore. Cold shower, and then back and forth and back and forth till you can't do it anymore. And that is this is a really profound thing. Uh, highly recommend it. It's super healthy for you, uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who I actually recommend you have on the show if you don't have her yet. She can tell you all about the, the the pretty profound benefits of the sauna. Man, I'd love to have her. Yeah, she's yeah. Listen to several of her work. Yeah, she does. Uh, she talks about telomeres increase. She talks about um, like life extension, basically, mm. um, and talks about uh, heat shock proteins. Um, it's really interesting things. She doesn't even get into the whole detoxification stuff. Um, she just basically covers. Uh, to, susceptibility to um, illness and, and a few other things. So highly recommend that. So that's definitely one flow trigger. Uh, meditation is another one. Um, it's been, that's been a really kind of valuable one for me. Um, I also like to journal. I journal long form quite a bit. And uh, it's, you know, assuming I have about an hour, it's, it's quite comfortable for me to get into this nice rhythm. Um, and, and coffee and, um, and kind of down tempo instrumental music really helps as well. So can I have, I have my ritual for that? Um, I lead, lead us through uh, your, your morning ritual. So a morning ritual is, is, is pretty kind of standard, straight, simple, uh, I wake up, do the final journal, uh, do some pull-ups, um, take a cold shower and meditate that's my um that's my thing and after that i i uh, have breakfast um i walk to my office i uh, have coffee and and then i journal for a bit and then and i start work that's the deal so 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 with the coffee it's grab coffee put on the headphones I have a noise canceling headset which i highly recommend mm -hmm. it's cancels the world out um and it's amazing especially on airplanes and then i started writing and just i just start to to put whatever's on my brain on the screen and actually journal long form on the computer so that's that's also an interesting difference from the, the physical right so because my, my brain works too fast for my 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 one hand to keep up but if i'm typing it's actually a fair fight all right I, okay yeah and um And then I just, I just like, that's my thinking time. That's my strategy time. That's my like, like kind of really cognitive processing time. And I value it a lot. Um, and also I, I like asking, I like, like getting to the bottom of things. So, uh, be it, you know, in person with, with someone, be it with, um, research, be it with product creation, be it through, uh, solving a problem, um, I, if I don't solve a couple of major problems a day, I'm not happy. I just, I just, that's the way I'm built. And so I just know that. Um, and really grateful to have solved a couple of problems earlier today. I'm ecstatic, right? So <laughs> self-awareness is really important. You know, not everybody's built like me. For some people, they have to feel a connection every day, right? That's the way they're wired. And, and figuring that out is important. And journaling will help with that. Yeah. No, I, I got really interested in personality types are recorded with Manish Sethi, maybe. Yeah, I know Manish. And uh, yeah, he's a good friend and he's very much into personality analysis and he yeah. introduced me to the whole MBTI. And uh, for example, yeah. I'm someone, I really need connection. I'm, I need, yeah. I communicate. Once I wake up, I take my phone and I communicate with, I don't know, 10 people. Yeah, and yeah. these are almost like energy balls that I collect. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of like, that's important to know because You know, any time that, that you're feeling a little off, you can always get back to that and use that like as, as a rebounding mechanism um, to feel more energy, right? 
Um, and also in terms of kind of flow triggers, there's so many flow triggers, but definitely I love adventure. Um, anything that allows me to learn anything, I'll, I can just do for hours. Um, so recently there was a, have you heard of a slack line? It's something you tie between two trees and attempt to walk over it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I did that for hours, right? First oh, really? Okay. It. You must yeah. have great balance. And no, well, I, I just tried it for hours, tried getting better and better and better and better. I don't still have, don't have great balance, but I'm, balance is getting better and better is the most important word. Yeah. yeah. There's no perfect, like Dave Asprey says. Yeah, it's better. It's the best we can hope for. <laughs> Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So we, we covered a couple of flow triggers. By the way, sauna is also great. I talked to Ben Greenfield about it. I don't know yeah, if you know that. Also, when you, when you shower cold after, uh, because I was really, you know, doing my research on testosterone and what happens yeah. when, when the, the cold water hits your, your, your neck pretty much, yeah. your brain releases gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is a, a, the first hormone in the testosterone production process ah. and so this actually helps increase your testosterone lower cortisol so you also learn how to deal with stress better so cold showers are fantastic I just on the side now uh, all right one thing now not a flow trigger but for you when you are really stuck in the funk let's say mm -hmm. what is that one method that you use to get out of it quickly let's say an, an emergency so what's path. how how quickly Uh, what's an emergency give me a time frame here let's say let's say you're yeah you know, just before a presentation and you're feeling in the funk and somehow the thoughts are not coming and uh, you really need to break out of it quickly how quickly like, like let's say within an hour five minutes half hour or five minutes so we're gonna funk well let's say 15 minutes give, give you 15 minutes 15 minutes before a presentation and I'm like, it's the funk. Like I know the presentation, but I just can't get my thoughts straight. Is that yeah. accurate? Cold showers. All right. Cold okay. showers yeah. fix that. Cold showers fix that. Um, Push-ups fix that. Something vigorous that just, it's a pattern interrupt, right? That's what you want is a pattern interrupt. Something that blocks you in your tracks and have, have you start on a completely different rhythm. So cold shower, new change of clothes. Um, kind of belting out the, the top of my lungs to like heavy metal, um, <laughs> right? Like something that, that just jars you out of the state. You need, you need intense um, stimulus, basically, uh, to, to, to yank out of a down, downward spiral, especially in a short period of time. Very good advice. Yeah. How about when you, let's say, you notice that you don't get anything done, what do you do? Well, you got to yank out and, and so you pattern interrupt again, same thing. So if you're in the zone, for example, if you're, let's say in a coffee shop or at an office trying to do work, you're not able to do it, change your location, just change, like, like just take a, take a step back, grab your stuff, head out somewhere else, work somewhere else, start from you, right? The worst thing you can do is keep trudging along. If you, if you don't feel momentum, if you don't feel like you're actually getting traction, stop it's okay to walk away and start again in about five minutes all right very very yeah. good so now winding down i wanted to ask you uh, about one more topic which is now you have two products what's what's in store with intelligent change still what can so we, we definitely want to create more things kind of with the five minute journal um i feel like there's there's more there uh and also we feel like People, what we do really is we create systems to simplify life so people can do what they've always wanted to do, right? Um, you know, they need to be happy. They need to be productive. These are basic innate drives. These are innate needs. Um, and I feel like the need for meaning is also a deep human innate need. And, um, you know, that's going to be our next kind of major problem to solve um, because I feel like it can really benefit people, right? Meaning is, is you've heard that, uh, the phrase, anyone who can bear, uh, a, a hat, anyone who has a why can bear any, mm. yeah. right. Um, you know, meaning is, is the stuff of, of life, you know, meaning helps us endure, you know, what we need to endure and everybody's got to endure something or the other, no matter how fortunate you are. Um, 
and you know that's that's what that's what brings kind of amazing things uh, to happen. You know, if, if people, if everybody on, on on the planet started living with meaning, we would not be in the position we are in today um, with humanity. And if we can make a dent in that, why not? Very cool. So a meaning product. I'm very yeah, excited so, about that. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, UJ. Last question, and this yeah. is the Peter Thiel question. I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you. What do you believe is right that other people think is wrong? Um, yeah, so that's the contrarian question. Um, I believe that unless we realize that what we are experiencing is a simulation, we won't be able to actually have a great life. A simulation, you mean that? In so a very philosophical sense, um, that the only thing we can really know right now is that there is awareness that exists in the system. That's it. It's the only thing we can say for sure. Everything else, we have no idea about. And unless we realize that, I feel like, unless you realize the laws of physics, you're never going to be able to bend it. And the laws of reality are very similar. Um, very cool. That's what I believe. I love that. UJ, thank you so much for being on the My show. Pleasure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, every, all the that. listeners, uh, if you want to find out more about UJ and his amazing products, the five minute journal, and the productivity planner, check us out on flowgrade.com. You'll find more information there and the product as well. And uh, stay flow great. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for listening to part two of my interview with UJ. If you are interested in more interesting episodes, then make sure to subscribe to this podcast and pay us a visit on flowgrade.com. I see you next time. Stay flowgrade.